here. Now here is a man who has made, he has actually done research on the subject. And this is going to be, I'm going to be listening to every word this man has to say. He is, uh, I don't know the, the nationality, the accent is going to come in. And uh, it might be a wee, a wee game, you could say, just what he is a citizen of the world, as far as I'm concerned. It's Dr. Arthur Steiner. And he is going to tell you some interesting facts about what lies behind something like the men's shed. Could you put your hands together? Well, good morning, welcome everyone. Uh, you know my name now, uh, I'm Arthur Steiner. I work for Glasgow Caledonian University uh, and I'm based in the Uni Center. Um, and I'm a researcher. Uh, a researcher who's uh, passionate about community development uh, issues, many different issues. So in my uh, um, academic career, I, I look at aspects of uh, social enterprise development. Uh, I look at rural development. I look at aspects of health and well-being of, of communities. So I investigated a number of different issues. Um, today, however, I would like to talk about what we know about men's sheds um, from academic perspective. I hope it's not going to be too boring for you. And then I'm going to talk about um, a research proposal that me and my colleagues are in the process um, of well, are currently developing. Um, so what do we know about uh, men's sheds? Um, well, first of all, we know that the participation in sheds um, leads to increased uh, sense of identity, self-esteem, and value. So this is something that, that research uh, evidence indicates already at this stage. Um, there are another um, additional benefits associated with uh, men's sheds, and here they are highlighted here. So aspects of uh, learning, formal and informal, probably informal learning is even more important than the formal one. Um, aspects of personal um, achievement and community engagement are equally important. Um, also, the opportunity to, to interact with each other, as we've heard today before, is probably the key function of men's sheds. So these are only some of the aspects um, associated with benefits of men's sheds. Um, if we think about men's sheds, very often we picture a physical space, and it is a physical space where people can meet, but on top of that, this space helps to integrate people. So the, this space creates opportunities for social connections um, and interaction. What we also know from academic evidence is that these opportunities for social interaction can lead to uh, reduced social isolation and reduced loneliness. And also what we know is that this can lead to improved uh, mental and um, physical health. So there's lots of benefits, um, however, very often it's difficult to evidence that because it's a chain of events. One thing leads to another. Um, also, some of the colleagues, um, academic, uh, academics, um, indicated that uh, participants, um, when talking about community sheds, very often they don't pay attention to physical health. What they emphasize is actually ability to interact with others. So social interaction, emotional side of uh, men's sheds is very often more important than very often health professionals think about men's sheds. So it's not only about the physical health. However, what we know from academic research is that there is a strong link between mental health because good mental health can lead to good physical health. So there is a correlation between the two. Um, also, other research indicate that particip participants um, of uh, men's sheds um, benefit in, a, in many different ways. Um, uh, so, for example, here this slide shows that men's sheds can create the purpose of life, identity, um, increased self-esteem and ability to learn new things. So it's, an, it's about ongoing ability to learn things. But also the other thing is ability to, to share what we know with others. So it is also about passing knowledge to others. 
So all those aspects are very important and they were highlighted in previous research. Um, here, what, do I, what I highlighted, those are individual benefits to people who participate there. But also, we have to look at the wider context because those people who participate in Menshet's activities, they're not isolated, they have families, they live in communities, so there is also added value associated with Menshet's and we have to look at the broader picture of, um, of uh, activities of Menshet's. Despite of increasing academic evidence, there are also some uh, challenges um, associated with research. Um, so we know in general that men-sheds are good, as I highlighted uh, in, uh, you know, over the last few minutes. But also some academics indicate that there is lack of rigorous evidence. So we need more research that can confirm that. We know there, that men-sheds are good. To what extent? How can we increase evidence? Um, so also, we, some of the colleagues, researchers, identify that there is limited ability to draw definite conclusions. How can we compare different interventions? What's better? And this is very important, especially these days, um, especially after the economic crisis, after aspects associated with, um, uh, with uh, public spending cuts, what policymakers want to do and what funding bodies want to do is to verify what works best. Um, and also, when we think about aspects associated with health and care service delivery, again, health professionals want to verify what works best. So they re really need tangible, strong uh, evidence on what works and what doesn't. Um, so what we know is that we need to conduct more longitudinal and comparative studies associated with uh, Manchester's uh, and the whole movement. Um, but the concept itself, as we've heard before, and I'm sure that you know, is not new. Um, the concept itself derived from, uh, arrived from Australia. It became extremely popular in the uh, 90s, um, and now we've got hundreds of Manchester's across Australia. Um, so the research, existing research evidence is largely based on what we discovered there in, um, in Australia. Um, also what we know is that men-sheds um, have the capacity to engage very often those who are hard to reach, those who are isolated, um, and those who have problems with engaging with traditional, conventional health providers who have problems with initiatives associated with traditional education or training. So this is actually an alternative, probably more efficient way of tackling cer certain challenges. And this has been already also recognized in some of the European policies. Um, for example, in national men's health policy in Ireland, um, there is a recognition that men's sheds actually can uh, bring positive effects. So I'm going to actually read the quote now here, which says which actually comes from um, the National Men's Health Policy uh, in Ireland. And this uh, document basically states that um, through the um, provision of mateship and a sense of belonging through positive and therapeutic uh, informal activities, men sheds achieve um, outcomes of positive health, happiness and well-being for uh, those men who participate, as well um, as for their um, partners, families, and communities. So it is a big statement, and it's good to see that actually this kind of <coughs> statement is now uh, um, in certain policy documents and um, health policies. Um, so a few years ago, me and my colleagues got really inspired when it comes to what men's sheds can achieve. Um, one of my colleagues had an opportunity to go to Australia and visit some uh, of the local mansions there in Australia. So obviously it's a community space that can help to create a number of community activities such as woodwork, metalwork, traditional crafts and many other. It depends on what people want to do in a local community. But it's not just that. It's, it is also a space for social interaction, as I highlighted before. It is a space for talking, relaxing, feeling valued, and feeling supported. But also, it is a space where people can gain information on a number of different themes and aspects. And this is a space that helps to link those who are very often isolated with wider communities. 
So there is many different kind of aspects associated with men's sheds that we have to remember about when talking about men's sheds. So one of the things that me and my colleagues want to do is to actually use the concept of men's sheds to reconceptualize how the services are currently provided. So going upstream of certain problems, health problems, um, and provide and use men's sheds as preventa uh, preventative health uh, measures and also aspects associated with uh, employability. So we know that this can happen. Um, so when it comes to this academic piece of, piece of work. Um, my colleagues from UHI initiated this kind of uh, project idea that we want to develop and we're in the process um, of developing it. Um, and we want to set up a project that will uh, be called uh, Rural Community Sheds. Um, th the idea for the project is to spread the word about uh, men's sheds and exchange the learning on the shed approach it is also about uh, working with practitioners to develop men's sheds. So it's also um, about practice. And this is also about evidencing what men's sheds can do. So this can be used by policymakers um, in order to influence their um, future policies and uh, uh, um, approaches. Um, when it comes to this collaboration, there is a number of partners from Northern uh, Europe. So we know that there are similar challenges. We've got partners from Finland, we've got partners from Ireland, Northern Ireland, and Scotland will be a lead partner. Um, we've got a number of, uh, apart from academics, we work with practitioners, we've got, uh, we work with communities. Um, we want to work with organizations like Scottish Men's Shed Association, but also representative of those in other countries, in Finland and in Ireland. Um, and the objective is basically to create healthier communities, connected communities, to increase entrepreneurial solutions. The sheds that we want to create and develop um, will be based on the concept of social enterprise. Um, and also we want to work with health professionals, which is really important, to think about new pathways uh, of uh, health and care service delivery. Um, so anticipated outcomes um, one of the outcomes relates to the establishment or development of men's sheds um, in uh, six uh, um, remote and rural communities in Scotland. Um, also, we want to look at um, the whole concept as, um, as um, a new model for uh, health and care service prov uh, provision. And also, we want to create on top of that uh, the concept of virtual men's sheds, so additional uh, sites for those who cannot basically participate physically in mentions so they can access information online. Um, so the benefits for, uh, of this pot potential project will be more, local, more, more localized uh, rural support um, that basically will tackle issues associated with those who are hard to reach in our communities and those who are unemployed or underemployed. Um, in our research approach, we want to uh, look at three different dimensions. So we want to look at aspects associated with benefits for individuals. So that relates to mental health and physical health of those who participate in men's sheds. Uh, we want to look at also a wider aspects associated with communities and families. So what is the benefit of having men's sheds for our communities in general? But also what we want to do is to evidence of what works, what doesn't, how can we even further improve current approaches and, and men sheds um, so we can develop the whole movement uh, even further. So these are some of the uh, key changes that we anticipate or would, we would like to uh, see um, um, happening. So one of them is increased inclusion, another one is new model um, of employability, increased connections, um, virtual community sheds, that's the, the new concept. Um, we want to lead to enhance health and well-being. And finally, uh, we want to design new preventative spend models. So that's something that might be uh, relevant to health and care service providers. So I think I uh, only covered it probably top of the iceberg of things that we want to do, but uh, I'm running out of time. so. I think uh, if you have any questions um, or want to get in touch with me in relation to, to this presentation, please feel so in the future. Thank you.